Today, we have a unique customer problem. This is an N54 swapped 2007 E85 Z4. Customer complained of not having any way to tell what the engine temperature is, and they also have engine overheating problems. And they realize this because the engine derates its performance as it gets too hot. I've witnessed this myself on the N54 E30 swap that I did a long time ago, and I think that this is exactly what is happening here. So why is it overheating, and how can we get temperature that he can see in the cabin? Now the M52 came in the Z4, the E85 Z4, so there really shouldn't be any problems with overheating. That was the first thing that I thought. Of course, this could be air trapped in the system, it could be an improper, imp improperly plumbed coolant reservoir or something along those lines, and then after taking a closer look at the system, it became pretty clear as to why the system was overheating. Taking a look inside the engine bay, there is a 16 inch fan installed here, and it's basically a puller fan that pulls the air in. It, it operates off of a, uh, a temperature sensor that sticks inside of the radiator core, which is fine. I don't have a problem with that. In fact, when I was testing the car, it turned on and off as it should have. So. The fan controls are not the issue. It operates by a relay here and it's hooked up to switch power. Not a problem. What I noticed here is that this fan, even though it looks like it's some sort of an auto zone fan, should still cool adequately, but you can see that the airflow arrow is pointed in the opposite direction. And I'm like, well, they're obviously probably not pushing air that way. They, what they probably did was wire it up backwards. What they did effectively was take a curved fan pusher fan and wire it up backwards and use it as a puller fan. Looking at the back side of the fan, this is a pusher curved blade fan. You can see that the arrow is clearly pointing that way, meaning that as the fan is going through and cutting the air, it's using this side of the blade in order to do the effect of cutting. That's how the, the fan was designed. When you use this fan as a puller fan and, and install it on the other side of the radiator, what you're doing is when you, have, when you reverse the polarity of the spin, you're actually cutting through this side of the fan instead of what it was intended for. And your CFM effectivity for cooling the, the engine is diminished by a significant amount. A straight blade fan probably would have been okay if you wired it up backwards, but you cannot do that with a curved blade fan. And that's what made this system so off. Another major reason why this C4 was not cooling nearly as effective as it could have been is because of the lack of a shroud. As you can see here, I've got a shroud. This fan does not have a shroud. A shroud acts to utilize the entirety of the surface area, a cooling effectiveness of the radiator such that when a fan is installed in the middle of that shroud, as you see here, it actually pulls air through the front of the radiator, through the fan, and, and utilizes the entire surface area of that radiator. This is the fan that was installed. And using the, just the 16 inch diameter, or circumference of the entirety of that fan was only cooling that specific section of the radiator. But a shroud utilizes the entire square surface area of the radiator, much more effective. So as stated earlier, the other issue that my customer has is that of coolant temperature, engine temperature enunciation. He can't see what the engine temperature is anytime he's driving the car. The existing cooling temp gauge on the cluster itself will not work, right? This guy will not read correctly due to the fact that there's two DMEs reporting that data. So that's not gonna happen. All right, so let's go through really quick why the actual gauge on the Z4 won't work when you have two DMEs in the same CAN bus. Here you have your N52 DME. 
Now this DME talks to all the other computers in the car. It talks to your SRS module, it talks to your uh, DSC module, it talks to your body control, it also talks to your combi, your instrument cluster, um, and there's more, right? There's, there's a lot more computers that it's talking to. So one of the things that the N52 DME actually provides in terms of data to the combi is uh, your engine temperature. Just like on the E90, E92, or even the E60, the engine temperature is provided by PT CAN, right? This is basically a PT CAN, powertrain CAN. And that's how it communicates a lot of information. Well, if you look at the dash, you'll see that the dash actually has, all the way from hot to cold, right? It's actually pegged all the way at hot. That's cold and hot. Why is it pegged to hot? Well, because that is FF, which is the register on the CAN ID for, um, it's basically full hot. It's not telling it's full hot, but that is the, the, the if there's no data, that's what it's providing. So. If I were to add an N54 DME in here, right? That N54 DME expects all of its in, in, uh, other computers to be in line of the PT CAN as well, right? So what we would end up doing, if we were to hook this up, we would end up basically hooking up this N54 right into anywhere. It doesn't matter where you hook up, but you're hooking up into that PT CAN line, right? And it would be sending out data for engine temperature. That's exactly what you want. It's to send out the engine temperature to the combi. The problem is, is it's also sending out all the other data that this thing sends out. It's a fuel pump, um, uh, uh, torque request to the DSC. It's sending everything, right? But it's, so what it's doing is it's getting that information sent out on this DME and this DME, so it would be very confused as to what the right data is. So that's why you can't just connect two DMEs on the, the same CAN bus because everything else on that CAN bus would be very confused as to what is the data that it should actually be listening to. That's the problem with, with hooking this up into that, is that you're not just going to get good engine temperature now, you're going to get varying engine temperature range and because it's going to be fighting with this FF here and it's also going to be providing bad data to all the other modules. So that's why you can't have this N54 DME hooked into that line. And therefore what we need is another solution for providing engine temperature data to the driver and that is going to be an aftermarket sensor. He actually did include an aftermarket, uh, an aftermarket coolant temperature sensor um, with a gauge in here and it doesn't look very, it looks a bit haphazard, but that that's something we can fix for sure. But that actually requires us to go into the engine and tap a actual temperature sensor onto the block or some other location for us to get access to it. On the N54, the engine temperature sensor is right here. It's a two pin sensor. Both of those pins here go directly into the DME and report temp engine temperature and the DME's control laws are operated based on that temperature. So we need to figure out how to tap into a temperature sensor that's just about as close physically to that as possible. Now, one of the items was to, hey, why don't we just split these wires and just go to a gauge? Doesn't work that way. In fact, you change the resistance of the readings by adding another, another gauge on that line. You cannot tap into these wires, okay? You cannot. It will, it will ruin the control laws. It will get different temperature and engine uh, resistance readings and will not operate correctly. What about a four wire temperature sensor that I used on the E36 N54 that I swapped a couple years ago? That is a viable alternative where you can see two wires go to the DME as, as required and the other two wires go to the cluster. The problem is is that the N52 that was in here actually relies on CAN data and the CAN data that it's going to be that the existing DME is going to be sending out is going to conflict with the DME 
data that's being sent out by the MSD81 for the M54. So that's not gonna happen either. So this won't really work. The, the two wire temperatures readings will not work with that cluster and it also won't work with any aftermarket sensor. So lucky for me, my customer had already kind of done a lot of the wiring and routing of that aftermarket gauge and sensor. This right here came from the came through the firewall and it goes to the actual sensor itself. It's a two pin sensor basically. It is also a resistance uh, sensor that, that supplies the data to the gauge. Here's our two wire sensor. This is the sensor that came with the aftermarket kit. It's got the green and the black wire as you saw earlier, and it's got a 1 8 NPT fitting. So we, now what we need to do is figure out how to tap into using a 1 8 NPT. Well, I had purchased a 1 8 NPT with its corresponding drill bit, and we, I also had purchased some aluminum. The aluminum here, this bar, is going to end up having this sensor go straight into it, and it is going to go tapped into this guy right here. This came from the N54, I had removed it off camera. And if I take a closer look at the way that this is constructed, you'll see that the oil lines come out this way and the coolant to the, the hot coolant to the radiator comes out here and over to the radiator. The existing temperature sensor is right off of this coolant passage kind of like where my finger is, basically what I showed you earlier while I was on the car. So I felt no better way or no better location to tap into it than right here on this red mark. Okay, so as you can see, it is done. The bung is installed and the sensor is right here. This is an eighth inch 27 thread pitch and it screws right in. The deeper you go with the, with the screwing, the more resistance you get, which means that the threads are the ones on an MPT that actually makes the, uh, the seal. So it's really, really wise, if not mandatory, for an MPT thread to use tape. And the tape that we'll use is that. We'll wrap it around that, install it there, and then we'll get everything reassembled and back onto the car. do in the time lapses. Essentially what we did was we cut the plastic radi uh, radiator bracket for the coolant reservoir so that we allowed room for the actual fan shroud, the aluminum shroud to fit behind here. There's plenty of room and accessibility between the fan and this uh, core support as well as the, uh, the shroud is butted up right up against the radiator on the top side and of course on the bottom side through the, uh, the mounting configuration. Wiring, very easy, just the two wires go from the fan directly to the harness that it was intended to before. And we have moved our temperature sensor here on the hot side so the fan runs a little bit longer than it normally would. We did wire up our sensor, our temperature sensor, so we can get temperature data back into the, 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 ca the cabin. And we need to secure this. We need to uh, wait for a new gasket to come in. And then we need to install our oil filter, or oil uh, cooler lines, and, uh, and then put that on. And then we can fill it up with coolant, top off the oil, and we are good to go. I'm really excited to give this thing a shot and see how much cooler it runs now that we've gotten all this taken care of. Verify that the coolant actually is registering on the display. Um, uh, so yeah, so let's just get it started here. So, two key clicks. You can kind of see it's already working there. It says 76 degrees. Uh, now we gotta put the key in the fob here. All right, and as you do, you press the start button. Climbing. 
Now that she's done, let's take her for a quick test drive and just see how she performs and how the temperature changes over time as we go around the block. heart <laughs> very responsive so the water temperature is probably hovering right around 69 degrees Fahrenheit right now um, really good accessibility to this this is a nice AEM aftermarket gauge and it allows you to set your alarm temperature if you ever wanted to um, have it tell you when you might be overheating so you can set that temperature however you want as it stands right now, I set it right at around 220 Fahrenheit because that temperature is what the engine really likes to run uh, its most happiest at. And the reason that the N54 runs so hot is because um, primarily for emissions perspectives, if a hotter engine consumes less oil because the rings are expanding and it prevents the oil from getting into the combustion chamber, same for the valves, and it also helps to burn off more gas and, uh, and, and that uh, in, terms, in, in turn comes to less less emissions. Oof. Okay, temperature is starting to drop a little bit more now and I believe that's because the thermostat actually opened. Remember we have our sensor installed on the hot side of the radiator. So once that thermostat opens, that coolant is going to start to flow and that temperature will drop. Alright, parked it and you can see that the fan is now turning on to keep everything nice and cool. All I need to do now is let this thing cool off, top off the fluid and I think we're in good shape. Well, that just about does it for me guys. We just fixed the Z84. Let's recap really quick. We fixed the temp engine temperature enunciation to the driver. We also installed a shroud with a spout puller fan that's actually working as a puller fan. You can see that it just went on right there. The temperature is fluctuating anywhere between 215 and 220 degrees statically, and it's maintaining that temperature. So everything seems to be working properly. Very proud to have worked on this car. Thank you so much for my customer for giving me the opportunity to work on this and learn just another thing about how N54s work. Thanks a lot guys for watching. Take it easy.